You're listening to The World at Eight with Lynn Mozart. The World at Eight, the number one in nationalist news. Highlights of the news today, Friday the 23rd of January 2015. Britain first targets East London in Christian patrols. Argos accused of racism after selling black and Asian dolls for £10 less than white toy, despite them being exactly the same. Nearly half of Londoners support death penalty for terrorists. Liberian doctors human rights trumps extradition bid for child rape in US. Hate attack on Jews soared 94% last year, police figures show. Muslims in France, they say we're not French. On a wing and a prayer, first wild owl goes under the knife in China. UN condemns Myanmar monk Riathu's sexist comments. Thought for the day, UKIP, are we being too naive? And finally, a Friday two for one day. UK News. Britain First targets East London in Christian patrols. Britain First has restarted Christian patrols in East London, calling the area Muslim occupied. The group's Facebook page shows members driving through East London in an ex-army issue Land Rover, claiming they were making our streets safe for our people. Britain First's latest attempt to patrol the streets is believed to be in response to the terror attacks in Paris, which left 17 people dead. Some London mosques have since received hate mail and death threats. The party has been repeatedly criticised for using misleading social media campaigns to gain likes and shares for their page. World Date Britain First was the first splinter party to take off from the British National Party around four years ago. It took, by proxy, a great deal of the design and motivation off the BNP and started as a protest group. Jim Dowson was unfortunately proved right on many of his reasons, but has now resigned as his goal of getting rid of Nick Griffin has been achieved. It has been fairly successful, so we'll just have to wait and see whether the establishment put up with their precious Islam coming under fire. By the way, I left the BNP when Britain first started and worked for them for five weeks and then rejoined the BNP. A good or bad move we will never now know, but I wish them and all splinter parties the very best of luck. Argos accused of racism after selling black and Asian dolls for £10 less than white toys, despite them being exactly the same. High Street chain Argos has been accused of racism after selling black and Asian dolls for £10 less than the white version of the children's toy. The store has been branded unacceptable for pricing a white doll called Maria at £34.99, £10 more than black doll Naima and Asian doll Yang. The 12-inch dolls designed for children aged 18 months and above are made by French firm Corolle Kalim. They are described on the maker's site as having cuddly, soft beanbag bodies, sleeping eyes and supple vinyl skin that is delicately scented with vanilla. In a statement as a responsible retailer, Argos strongly refutes any suggestion of discrimination with the pricing of the Carole Kalin dolls. A genuine online pricing error led to one of the dolls being advertised at an incorrect price. This error is being amended today and all three dolls are now priced at twenty four ninety nine. We apologise for any confusion caused. World date. Crap and more crap. They probably reduced the price of the ethnic dolls because they were selling like hotcakes and the white ones weren't. Nothing racist about it. It's a simple matter of too many ethnics are having kids anyway and they can all afford more presents. They also always go to stalls like Argos. Bring back gollywogs, I say. Lovely, cuddly little black fellas. Nearly half of Londoners support death penalty for terrorists. Nearly half of Londoners back bringing back the death penalty for terrorist murders, a shock poll reveals today. The YouGov survey for the Standard showed 49% of adults in the capital support capital punishment for murder during terrorist attacks, such as the killing of Fusilier Lee Rigby. Men are more hardline, with 55% believing terrorist killers should be executed, compared to 42% of women. Older people are more likely to favour the death penalty for such offences, according to the poll carried out after the Paris atrocity in which three terrorists killed 17 people. 54% of Londoners aged 40 and over supported the reintroduction of the death penalty, which was abolished in 1965, while the figure for the 25 to 39-year-old age group was 44%, and 38% amongst 18 to 24-year-olds. 
YouGov interviewed 1,034 adults in London between January the 19th and the 21st. World date. I am with the men here. The plods should have shot both these black Muslim killers as they were chatting to members of the mainly ethnic watchers who were filming them on their mobiles. Shot the watchers as well. And yes, terrorists should be shot for treason and their families and communities deported at once. Likening the Islamic terrorists to the IRA is disgusting and misinformative. The English did not shine over Ireland at all hundreds of years ago, and the IRA was in direct opposition to the RUDC and the Orangemen. I didn't approve of their tactics, but then they might have thought they had good reason. These Islamic bastards need to be taught a lesson, and soon. Liberian doctor's human rights trumps extradition bid for child rape in the US. British court rules extradition of 48-year-old Tobias Bowen from Liberia would breach human rights because he faces an indefinite sentence if convicted of sex crimes in New York. The 48-year-old fugitive fled New York for Africa four years ago after being charged with two counts of raping a child, Westminster Magistrates Court heard. The court was told he'd settled in Milton Keynes, Buckinghamshire, with his wife and young family, and that Britain was his safe haven. The Magistrates Court, which deals with extradition cases from across the country, ruled that Bowen's right to liberty and security under the European Convention on Human Rights was at threat from his extradition. World at eight. And how old was this child? Knowing the Africans, under five would be my guess. He and his family should be deported back to the US for trial and then let them deport the family to Liberia. We in the UK are too ready to become a safe haven for perverts and criminals. And what they cost the country goes beyond belief. Hate attacks on Jews soared 94% last year, police figures show. Hate crimes against Jews increased to almost 300 incidents in London, whilst crimes against Muslims dipped slightly, Scotland Yard data indicates. The number of hate crimes against Jews nearly doubled last year, according to the latest police statistics. Figures from the Metropolitan Police, released amid growing concern over anti-Semitic attacks in the wake of the Paris terrorist atrocities, showed there were 297 hate crimes against Jewish people in the year to August. The figure was up from 153 in the previous 12 months, a rise of 94%. In the same period, the number of anti-Muslim hate crimes in the capital dipped slightly from 518 to 495 last year, a 4% fall. Last week, police announced they were stepping up patrols in areas with large Jewish populations. Britain's most senior counter-terrorism officer, Assistant Commissioner Mark Rowley of Scotland Yard, said officers would liaise with Jewish community leaders in light of continuing anti-Semitic rhetoric from extremists. A review of overall security measures is also looking at the safety of other minority communities, including Muslims, and at how to protect police officers who might be deliberately targeted by Islamic extremists, he said world at eight. Of course, being English, Rowley has got it wrong. Most of the anti-Semitic attacks are done either by Muslims or the tag end of neo-Nazi groups who again have it all wrong. The Muslims hate all non-Muslims and the neo-Nazis like to be on the side of the Arabs. Why, I will never know. But in case you didn't know, it was a Roman who killed Christ, who was incidentally a Jew. European News Muslims in France, they say we're not French. After the Paris terror attacks, the spotlight is once again focused on how France has apparently failed to integrate its Muslim immigrants. Despite calls for national unity, many Muslims who the locals spoke to in Paris said they simply don't feel French. <laughs> the French Prime Minister, Manuel Val, caused a stir this week when he said France was suffering from social and ethnic apartheid. The locals spoke to 17-year-old Sira and 22-year-old Hasva, two French-born Muslim sisters who run a local shop selling women's accessories. The French say we aren't French, Hasva said. People always ask me, where are you from? Other Muslim women shared their view. I felt French until people told me I wasn't, said 28-year-old Aisha, who was also born in France. We have never felt integrated. It's frustrating. She pointed to France's controversial law of 2004, which banned the wearing of the Muslim headscarves in schools, and then a following law of 2011, which banned the full face veil in public. Her friend, 26-year-old Mariam, suggested France would be better off teaching about different religions in schools than reinforcing secularism. Islamic values are replacing those of a republic which failed to deliver on its promise of equality, and the residents of the suburbs increasingly do not see themselves as French, the researchers said at that time. 
world at eight. They aren't French, any more than the ones born over here are English or British. They're Muslim and identified by their religion and usually their dress and complexion. It's God's work in the making, telling who comes from where by their appearance. It isn't a sin until now with the diversity brigade. Do you think someone is telling them something, like go home? They're not wanted anywhere in Europe. You could be born in a stable, but you're not a horse or, or sheep. Get it? World News On a wing and a prayer, P-R-E-Y-E-R, -E -E first wild owl goes under the knife in China. A badly injured wild owl is flying fit after becoming the first of its kind to go under the knife in China. The European eagle owl, which is also known as the Boo 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 Boo, found itself in unfamiliar surroundings after fracturing its wing. But the plucky predator is set to make a full recovery after braving the operating table. And it is the first procedure carried out in China on a wild fowl, as the country attempts to improve its record protecting its native wildlife. The feather creature was treated in the city of Shenyang in northeastern China's Lanin province. It is a protected species in China, although the bird can be spotted from Spain through to Japan. Animal rights activists hailed the operation as a sign that the country is actively involving itself in caring for wildlife. World date, about bloody time. UN condemns Myanmar monk Wirathu's sexist comments. The UN human rights chief has called on Myanmar to condemn a Buddhist nationalist monk for calling a UN special envoy a bitch and a whore. UN human rights chief Zaid Rahad al Hussein said Ashin Warathu's comments amounted to incitement to hatred. The comments related to South Korean envoy Yang Yi Lee, who was in Myanmar last week to address the plight of its Muslim minority. Wirathu spent almost a decade in jail for inciting anti Muslim violence. The monk is the leader of the 969 movement, which says Myanmar should remain a Buddhist country and calls for restrictions and boycotts on Muslims. Mr. Saeed called the language sexist and insulting. I call on religious and political leaders in Myanmar to unequivocally condemn all forms of incitement to hatred, including this abhorrent public personal attack, Mr. Saeed said in the statement. Systematic discrimination. Since the end of the military rule in Myanmar, also known as Burma, in 2011, Buddhist nationalism, largely led by monks including Wirathu, has been energised. In 2012, scores of people and died and thousands were left homeless after violence broke out between Buddhists and Muslims in Rakhine State, mostly from the Rohingya minority. Anti-Muslim violence has flared several times since then. The UN says the Rohingya are being persecuted and last week passed a resolution calling on Myanmar to give them citizenship. Yang He Li said displaced Rohingya were living in abysmal conditions in refugee camps. Last week, Wirathu spoke at a public rally where he criticised the UN interference and personally attacked Ms Li, according to local media. We have explained about the race protection law, but the bitch criticised the laws without studying them properly, he said from the stage to the crowd. Don't assume that you are a respectable person because of your position. For us, you are a whore. World at eight. Well said, Wirathu. The world is all set to protect one of the worst jihadi religions it will ever know. And for the worst reasons, I will do a thought on this subject next Monday. Thought for the day. UKIP, are we being too naive? I wouldn't have thought that the Brits were naive over politics in general, but I'm afraid they have become so, and with a smattering of Never Neverland oiled into the mix. Of course, it is the establishment's wish and design that this be so, which makes social and political engineering so very effective in a now rather small indigenous population. The warning bells are ringing with the podgy female who heads the SNP, which is the only nationalist political party to have been allowed to survive intact during the last 10 years at the behest of the powers that be and who, in reality, organise our political lives in this country and indeed probably throughout Europe and the Western world. Virgin Sturgeon has said that her party will vote on English laws in the future, and God help us, she may well be right. But then, as at the moment we have all the world, Europe and its mother, implementing and interfering in English laws, one small party north of the border is really small fry. See, I'm quaking in my furry boots, matey. 
Now we come to UKIP, who have been tipped as becoming the new golden boys on the block after the elections this coming May. They may well be, which of course is the intention of the TPTB, the powers that be, and are too many to be named and of course much too secret, Bilderberg rest in pieces. You may wonder why I, a devout nationalist and patriot, am uttering these detestable words, and you may well wonder, so I will explain. UKIP is a man-made political party, and made to order, and as Michael Caine would say, not a great many on the street know that. It is, however, true. Around the ramifications of Kilroy Silk and the truthism he spoke on TV about Islam, and the genuine and often hidden rise of true nationalism in this country, which was centred around the British National Party, of which I was a proud member for ten years, 2004 to 2014. I saw and met the best of the best with that party, and I also ignored the worst and most idiotic of moves that could have been deliberate or just plain stupid. But in 2009, the BNP was a force to be reckoned with in this country. We had media attention, not always very good, but as the old saying goes, any publicity is good publicity, which in fact is not and was not true. But we had the establishment on the run. The BNP appeared in many books and TV shows, as of course racist knuckle-draggers, and they even published a book called Bloody Nasty People, which was of course us. But many members of the public working class saw through this and ignored the Marxist media completely. But since the Third Reich, patriotism has not been popular in Europe and some way had to be found to cull the BNP and draw its members and potential members to another more acceptable and manageable cause. So battlefronts were raised and voila, the United Kingdom Independence Party was born of a long and difficult labour. During the years, whilst the BNP have suffered from characters who have not done the best for their party and generally let the side down, either through greed, ignorance or being double agents, UKIP have been infiltrating Europe at an alarming rate. They don't do much in the EU itself, but collect the vast and many financial benefits that go with the EU membership, and indeed have been accused of being more absent than most other political parties. But this has not been reported by the media, of course. The media have blown up every minor success and ignored every gaffe. That is the way hype and positive misinformation work. Farage is a salesman and a bloody good one. He is so well supported by the establishment, he can more or less say what he likes and is never pilloried, but might just get a slap on the wrist. The best of the best hype was that Farage and his party were, wait for it, racist. Now that won him more support in the Britain of today than ever the BNP won when uttering the exact same sentences. So how does this come about? How can one party be racist in a good way and another in a bad way? Let me tell you how. This is the secret. You divide and conquer. You say, as Farage did, he welcomes immigration to the UK. Job done and he is a diversity and multicultural guru. Then he says he would like to halt or cap immigration from the EU. But then, just as the lovers say, oh no... He then says that he would welcome more immigration from the third world. Now, I bet your head's swim swimming, but you would still vote for him, of course, as he's clearly not racist. But he is, my friend. He is racist in an anti-white way. He doesn't want mi white migration from Europe, but he wants black and brown migration from the third world. So, in truth, nothing would alter on the immigration slate if UKIP got into Parliament. In fact, with the Scots buttering up to UKIP, it would get worse, and we would be truly overrun and outbred, and you would have voted for it. True nationalists and patriots, whatever their party or splinter group, or even the man in the street, truly have wanted to halt all immigration into this country for many years, for us to recoup and get our public services, like education and the health service, back on track, and our country back on track financially. And also to give our white youngsters a chance to buy and own small properties, which have been and are being taken away every day by both foreign and greedy white landlords who buy to let. What many political parties fail to understand or promote is that if they are voted into power by the people, they owe a debt to those people to do the best they can for them, not for every Tom, Dick and Alley that arrives on our soil. It's as simple as that. And we nationalists have always had that message. England for the English, not British, as that encompasses all manner of strange ethnicities and cultures nowadays.
It is not racist, it is self-survival. UKIP know this, they're not stupid, and it isn't by chance that the pound sign is the logo of that party. They need voters, and they need the ethnic and Muslim votes as well as the working classes, and the Middle England retirees who see their country going down the pan from afar, usually in Spain. UKIP is respectable, and many disaffected nationalists will vote for them this spring, especially now that the BNP is floundering, and from my inside information, any regional officials left have not had a membership update from HQ since last June. You can't run an area without an up-to-date detail and contacts to do just that. Contact. The BNP, a child born of John Tyndall, and I have heard his speeches, and they were bloody good, has been eroded and infiltrated and generally buggered about ever since I joined, and I have not seen but not, and I have seen but not believed it. MI five or six or whatever have had their wicked way. They have managed to persuade people that patriotism is not a good thing unless aligned to a greedy, manipulative Barra boy, dear Nigel, and it is all the better if any said party just accepts what is going to happen and cash in on it just the same. Vis a vis the parley about immigration. Farage courts Islam and avoids any real subjects that affect the man in the street or the poor buggers who have to live with Muslims in their midst or any alien culture that ghettoises itself in their living space. We Brits believe what we see and hear on the TV and media. We have had 40 years of multicultural propaganda and are quite used to seeing ourselves become a minority in the world of entertainment and the arts. We think we have to be disabled, moronic, sad, medically challenged, dependent, transgender, or simply don't know, any colour under the sun except white or pink, dumb or dumber, to qualify for being cool or trendy, and it helps to have an abuse story tucked or two tucked up your jumper as well. Now that is really trendy. But whilst we are searching on the political scene, both of the nationalist parties who made the headlines, the BNP and the EDL, have been pushed downwards and out of the running. It has taken ten years to do it, but that aim has been achieved. Patriotism is just UKIP, and that is in reality not patriotism at all, just block building for babies. And quite rightly, the howl will go up from the patriotic front as to who they will vote for in the elections. It's been made clear from last year that the EDL is finished as their leader went to the dark side literally and cozied up to Islam in a big way. Of course, everyone knew the plods had threatened to throw the book at Tommy, so he probably had to turn about face. The BNP has been reduced to a northern rump of a party, which has been going its own way in a downward spiral since Nick Griffin left for the EU five years ago, which of course suited the TPDB down to AT. We have about 50 small patriotic groups clustered around the country, but there is very little communication amongst any of them in reality. See, divide and conquer, it works like a charm. Now many will say what a good thing they were too racist for me, so I'll join, so I'll vote you, Kippen. Yes, no vote should be wasted, and when you look at Labour and Miliband, and he even makes Farage look professional. Camoran has reduced the national debt that Labour left, but he still spends too much on foreign aid and is busy cutting back on our armed forces, which is a dangerous game to play in a multicultural country where many, if not most, of our foreigners have no respect for us at all. The Lib Dems are the mirror image of UKIP without the teeth, so in the words of a friend of mine, an ex-BNP member, he's joined the monster raving loony party, and he might well win as well. Now, to show how our Nige thinks, the latest bit of tomfoolery on the table is that UKIP would disband the NHS completely and make everyone pay medical insurance, which is, of course, the basis of Obamacare, which never had a National Health Service anyway. It is complete rubbish. True, our NHS needs sorting, but it needs less numbers of would-be patients, thus cutting out immigration and a repatriation process to begin at least with criminals, terrorists and their families. How can a guy with a contract hours job, a mortgage and a family to feed pay private medical insurance? How can a single guy or girl without work pay for subscriptions and care? How can many elderly on fixed incomes or benefits pay out for expensive insurance? They can't, and they would not, and they, the people who would vote for Nige, would be let down in a big, big way, whilst he welcomes millions more migrants into our country to use the very system he wants to destroy. Answer me that one, please, Mr Farage. Farage is not Jesus with the loaves and fishes. You cannot solve a problem caused by another problem without radical surgery. 
Facts are facts. We are too full of people now. London looks like a foreign city. The North has gone in reality. And the South is the most densely populated area per capita in Europe. And it's getting worse. We Brits will have to pay for new roads and new houses, and it isn't to house or make travelling easier for us, it's to accommodate the thousands of new migrants who are and will arrive in this country this year, and make no mistake, whilst cutting back on our councils and social services and benefits, this is only being done to accommodate foreigners, just as the NHS is in crisis now. Don't be deceived by the TV that a few elderly patients in a bed for too long account for the terrible hours and staffing problems suffered by our own well-meaning and trained medical personnel. Not all our problems are directly caused by immigration, of course, but a day to a dollar, 99.9% .9 of them are caused by massive immigration over the last 45 years. And to deny that, you would have to be an ostrich. And by the way, don't go down to Woolwich as it looks like Islamabad or Senegal on a good day. So UKIP, whilst taking up the nationalist slack, will not do anything about immigration. It will not come out of the EU, as apart from being funded by big business and whatever government is in power, the EU provides a very nice living, thank you. So although the establishment have created a chimera to siphon all the nasty people away, what will actually happen if they get into Parliament? Well, once they've suckered all the bods who really don't know what they are voting for, but think it might have something to do with getting rid of Islam and leaving the EU, I really don't know. At least with the British National Party of old, we knew what we were voting for and were honest about it, much to the display of TPTB. But revenge is a dish best served cold, and somewhere someone is thinking of the real points of government. In the BNP, we lost many good people, many of whom could have formed a working government in the early years, but not now. The Marxists have won at the moment, as Britain is wavering on the borders of patriotism, and we might find that, as I said many months ago, the BNP have in fact done their job. Being a racist is, as Farage would say, acceptable, and leaving the EU is now extremely popular, as the BNP wanted. So, in fact, the establishment have not got it all their own way. Our views, ridicule though they were, have come to be in the marketplace. Immigration is now talked about as is leaving the EU, whereas ten years ago no one would dare say anything in public or even private without a whisper or an apology. So patriots and nationalists need not cry into their beer. Our job is done for the moment. And it goes without saying that when the torch is passed to someone else, we will not forget how they got there, on our backs and with the revenge of the establishment in Whitehall. Finally, a Friday two for one day. Obama looked at Michelle, chuckled and said, You know, I could throw a thousand dollar bill out of the window right now and make somebody very happy. Michelle shrugged her shoulders and replied, I could throw ten hundred dollar bills out of the window and make ten people very happy. Hearing their exchange, the pilot of the plane said to his co-pilot, Such big shots back there, I could throw both of them out of the window and make 256 million people very happy. <laughs> if you're one of the 256 million, <laughs> retell this one. And although late, better late than never, welcome to 2015. Our phones, wireless, cooking, fireless, cars, keyless, food, fatless, tyres, tubeless, dress, sleeveless, youth, jobless, leaders, shameless, relationships, meaningless, attitudes, careless, feelings, heartless, education, valueless, children, mannerless. Country, godless. Muslims, dangerous. We are speechless. Government is clueless. And our leaders are worthless. You've been listening to The World at Eight. I am Lynn Mozar, and I and the team at World at Eight and Radio Britain wish you all a very happy and a very safe weekend.